What's up YouTube? How goes it? Today we're talking about resolutions. Now ironically, it is the end of the year and this will probably be my last video for 2020, but I'm not talking about New Year's resolutions here. I'm talking about the ones you find when you go to Best Buy or your local tech store to buy a TV. What do they mean? 1080p, 4K, 8K, and that sales rep is telling you go for the highest, it's the best and greatest, and you're like, am I being scammed? Is this legitimate? Well, those are all great questions, and I'm hoping in this video, in the next couple of minutes, I can educate you so you can make an informed decision without any buyer's remorse. As always, guys, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing to my channel. Let's get started. So the first step in finding out which resolution might be ideal for you, first we need to see what these numbers represent. So in the case of 1080p, which is often also called FHD or Full HD, 1080p basically represents a resolution of 1920 by 1080, which means that each line has 1920 pixels and there are a total of 1080 lines on a given display, hence the resolution of 1080p. It's also worth noting that the P actually stands for progressive and not pixels. This is often quite a misconception that goes around. In the case of a 4K display, it's the same logic, but we have a larger number of pixels. So basically you have 3,840 pixels per line, and you have a total of 2,160 lines on a given 4K display, which means it's a lot more than the 1080p display, and that creates the overall display itself. It's also worth noting that it's called a 4K display because you have almost 4,000 pixels per line. It is a bit of a marketing term because it's approximated, but that's where it originates from. The same logic would apply to a 8K display, a 16K display, and whatever else comes down the road in the future. So now that we understand what resolutions represent, we can take it a step further. And to do this, we need to understand another important aspect, which is pixel density. So pixel density basically defines the amount of pixels you have in a given area on the screen. And we usually measure this in PPI or pixels per inch. So for example, let's take a 32 inch screen. At a 1080p resolution, a 32 inch screen is going to have a 68 PPI or 68 pixels per inch. On a 4K display, the same screen size is going to have 138 pixels per inch. That's a drastic difference. You have twice as many pixels on the screen, which means you should in theory see sharper images, more clarity, and you should also see a greater definition of whatever image or video you're looking at. Now here's the thing. In the case of a 32 inch display at a 2.5 meter viewing distance, you'll notice that it's actually hard to tell the image difference between a 4K display and a 1080p display. I mean, you can, the 4K will look slightly better, but you have to keep an eye out for it. This is because obviously the further you are, the more difficult it becomes to differentiate pixels from one another. However, that doesn't mean 4K is a gimmick necessarily. What I mean is, let's say we increase the display size. Let's go to a more modern display of 65 inches. That's a much bigger surface area. So you have the same number of pixels, but you've stretched the surface area, which means now the pixels are more apart. In theory, that means you'll have a lower PPI. So what does that mean? That means in the case of a 1080p display, you only have a PPI of 34 now. This means the pixels are way more far apart, you'll have less clarity, less sharpness. And you can see this, when you look at large displays that are usually above 60 inches, you notice that 1080p displays look slightly blurry. Their quality doesn't appear as good as it would have been on, let's say, a 32 inch TV. On the flip side, a 4K display has a 64 PPI, which is considerably higher, twice as much to be exact, and you have a much more clear image on a 65 inch display and you can actually notice that at the respective viewing distance and it feels like the 4k resolution is so much more HD than the 1080p one so that's the logic behind it obviously the more you stretch the display the more apart the pixels become so to alleviate this problem we add more pixels and if you let's say you go to a higher display or a higher larger display to be exact to a 95 inch display for example those pixels are further spread apart as a result of this you need to have more pixels to keep that consistent high quality image that you've come to expect from a HGTV. Hopefully you're keeping up with me at this point in time. The point I'm trying to make is that a big factor into determining what resolution you want to get for your TV is on the screen size. Ideally, my advice is if you're getting anything larger than 40 inches, I suggest getting a 4K display if your budget allows for it. 4K TVs have become considerably cheaper than they were several years ago. This is because there's a large variety of them. They come in different prices and different ranges with different kinds of features. However, if you are getting anything less than a 40 inch, then you'll notice that the difference between a 4K display and a 1080 display at a 2.5 meter view 
viewing distance is often somewhat negligible and you can get away with getting a lower resolution display like 1080p. Also, it's worth noting if you're going exotic, for example, Samsung has a 98 inch 8K display. It costs a hundred thousand dollars here in Canada. That is an absurd amount of price. Now, price aside, the 8K resolution itself makes sense because 95 inch, the PPI is quite spread out. So having those extra pixels will make a difference. But for most of us, we're probably gonna get a TV that ranges between the 40 to let's say 75 inch range. And in those cases, a 4K display is usually more than ample to provide a nice viewing experience. Now, apart from the resolution, there are two very other important factors I want to mention. The first one is that not all displays are created equal. So let's say you have two displays, both are 4K, both have the same screen size. While resolution is an important factor to look at and a great starting point, it's worth noting that one 4K display might appear slightly better because the color accuracy is better, the saturation is better, the brightness levels might be higher, the contrast might be better. So you wanna do your homework and make sure you look at those things as well. And ideally, it's best to actually go walk into a store, look at a display before you buy it. It gives you an idea of what appeases your eyes the most and I think you can't go wrong with that approach where possible. The second important factor to keep in mind is that this analysis I gave you pertains mostly to TV screens or TV displays and makes the assumption that you're watching it at least two meters apart from the screen. If you are using a monitor on the other hand, a computer monitor, that's a whole different animal. You're much closer to the screen and resolutions vary differently. So you'll notice more inconsistency between pixels because you're closer. So that's a different animal, like I said, and I can make a video on that if you guys are interested to learn about what resolutions matter when it comes to monitors. So let me know in the comment section below. I hope you guys found this video to be insightful. Now that you know what resolutions represent, you'll have a better idea of what you're buying and when it will matter the most and you can figure out what fits in your budget hopefully as always if you enjoyed the content please consider subscribing to my channel it really does help me grow it means a lot to me and it helps me provide quality content for awesome people like you guys until next time soul of tech logging out